Hi, sorry about the new office background here. I didn't have time to build it, scale or to paint it. In a previous video, a previous couple of videos, we looked at the th uh, three cent microcontroller from Padook. And we got that from uh, LCSC, which is a Chinese catalog type digikey kind of uh, uh, competitor, digikey mouse of Farnell's uh, catalog competitor. And I thought we'd take a look at another part from it. It's not a microcontroller because well, microcontrollers are expensive, right? At three cents. How about another jelly bean part, which uh, you'd be no doubt familiar with, the low dropout voltage regulator. How cheap can you get these on LCSC? Well, turns out you can get them for one cent or a little bit, of maybe one and a half cents. I'm rounding down to one cent. The one cent linear regulator, I bought 3,000 of them. <laughs> Let's check them out. So why on earth would you want a one cent voltage regulator? Well, why not? When you're optimizing the bill of materials for your product, it could matter. And with uh, modern products like FPGAs and other, uh, like, you know, really high density uh, logic, they often require lots of low voltage power supplies, not just 3.3 volts, you know, 2.5 volts, 1.8 volts, 1.2 volts, you know, even like 0.8 volt cores, one volt cores and things like that. So it's not uncommon to need even like half a dozen different voltage rails inside your product. And that really adds up when you're uh, talking about, you know, selling thousands of items and you might have, you know, three or even five voltage regulators per product. So it can often pay to have like a cheap jelly bean part like this voltage regulator, for example, this one's actually a fixed 3.3 volt one, but we might have a look at adjustable uh, ones just to show you how cheap they are. And well, let's go to DigiKey, for example, and do a uh, search here on, I've sorted by uh, price here. In volume, they start at like 3,600, they start at four and a half cents, which is pretty cheap, but you'll note that's obsolete from a company that I've never heard of, Skyworks Solutions Inc. Meh, it's in nano power range, you know. But if you go down here, like the next one that's actually active, which is the cheapest, is basically six cents in uh, volume. So like 3000 volume. And you add these up, you have multiple products times thousand, you're trying to reduce your bill of materials and stuff like that. Well, why spend, you know, six cents plus uh, tech, you know, they're eight and a half cents, stuff like that. Might not sound like a lot, but when trying to optimize your bill of materials, these sorts of stuff really add up. So if you go over to LCSC here, which is kind of like the Chinese uh, kind of competitor to DigiKey that, spe that specializes in having these Chinese brands. I've didn't done a previous video looking at these. And if you search for positive linear regulators as well, they've got 898 parts here. And here we go. Look, the cheapest one, the LC6202 from Shenzhen Fuman <laughs> Electric Corp um, is like in the order of 1.6. But the one we're going to look at here that I've actually got 3,000 of. Why 3,000? Because they came on a reel of 3,000 and it was cheap as. So I just got a reel of 3,000 because they might come in handy. Anyway, the SC662K and this is the 3.3 volt version. You can get other versions with uh, different fixed voltages and there's also, and if you want to search for adjustable ones, you can search for adjustable. Often it's sometimes better to say uh, include like a jelly bean adjustable voltage regulator so that uh, you can just choose whatever so you've got the one bill of materials item there, but then you need your different resistors, three pick and place parts as opposed to just one and, and stuff like that. So it's nice just to have, because you're always going to need a 3.3 volt rail. So it's nice to have this. Anyway, look at the price. In 20 of quantity, they're only 2.4 cents. And when you start talking serious volume here, one and a half cents. And if you go up there, it's like 1.44 cents. And you've got to remember, this is not direct from the manufacturer. This is from a Chinese DigiKey equivalent catalog supplier who actually have stock. In this case, they don't actually have much of this. But look, these ones up here, 8,700, you know, 5,000, 4,000, 30,000 in stock, right? There's no shortage of these ones. So here's another one that I had a look at. Um, this one com comes from Nat Linear. You might think, oh, National Linear. That sounds legit. No, Nat Linear is... <laughs> natlinear.com. <laughs> They're trying to, um, it's got nothing to do with national semiconductor or linear technology, but they said, hey, they're famous names. We'll just join them together. 
Hey, we'll sound legit. There you go. So they sell, they have this 300 milliamp uh, linear regulator in different uh, packages. It's not that, it's a little bit more expensive than the one we've got here. Um, but anyway, all Chinese data sheets. So, yep, knock yourself out. This one actually does have curves. But the one we're going to play with, the uh, Fengen Fuman Electric Co., if we have a look at the data sheet, Shenzhen Fine Mad. <laughs> Fine Mad Electronics Group. This is hilarious. So that sounds ridiculous. The Shenzhen Fine Mad Electronics Group. In fact, I think I've, they've got their name wrong in the, their own name wrong in the data sheet. Because if you go over here, it's the Shenzhen Fine Maid Electronics Group. Maybe it's not the same company. I don't, anyway, they're listed on the Chinese uh, stock exchange. They're currently 20 Chinese bucks. There you go for the share price. Um, I assume. It's the same company. Anyway, maybe there is a Shenzhen Fine Mad, but <laughs> it's nuts. But it sounds like the right company. Shenzhen Fine Made engages in design, development, packaging, testing, and sale of electronic and digital analog hybrid integrated circuits in China are used in power management class, bingo, and all sorts of... So it, it sounds like them. Um, and they it's superchip.cn. Is that them? Let's check them out. Yep, it's them, superchip.cn, so <laughs> fine mad. And yep, there it is, there's your data sheet. Once again, only available, it's exactly the same one. So FM is fine mad. And here's the actual part I've got here. It says 80 milliamps there, but that would be 18 millivolts dropout at 18 milliamps current. And you'll notice that they actually come in a um, hermetically sealed uh, package like this. Uh, um, you don't generally don't want to take these out of their hermetically sealed uh, packages like this until it gets to the pick and place machine. The reason that they do this, and this one doesn't include it, but they often include a little uh, one of those dry desiccant bags in there to absorb, absorb the moisture. And the whole part about that is that uh, it keeps moisture from uh, leaking into the parts before reflow. Part, uh, plastic molded packages like this um, in general, is that if moisture can seep into the packages, just sit in there on the shelf, and once that moisture seeps in, then it can, uh, when it goes through the reflow oven, that heats up, the, it can expand into a gas and can actually crack the plastic uh, package of these things. So, yeah, just something to watch out for, but anyway, yeah, there's no desiccant bag in this one. Oh, yes, there is. There it is. Little desiccant bag. Didn't see it. So you don't have to uh, read Chinese to be able to understand this data sheet. It's clearly plus minus 2% uh, nominal uh, tolerance there. 6 volts maximum input voltage, very typical for these kind of uh, low voltage, low dropout regulators. Uh, a selectable output voltage from 1.5 volts to 5 volts in factory settable 0.1 volt increments. LCSC, of course, aren't going to carry all of like the 0.1 inch voltage uh, things. But hey, maybe you can, you know, if you're serious about this and uh, you could maybe order them direct from the manufacturer, maybe you can talk to LCSC and they might be able to source them for you would just be uh, the part number difference at the end. Uh, 25 microamps quiescent current here. Uh, looks like at V in at 4.3 volts, V out at 3.3. Uh, it's capable of 250 milliamps, which is quite a generous amount of current for a little SOT23 jelly bean regulator like this. Once again, you can get higher, you can get lower, but it's not too shabby. Uh, 0.2 volts dropout at 90 milliamps output current, 0. that increases to 0. 0.4 at 150. They don't tell you what the dropout is at 250, and they don't provide any graphs further on the data sheet, so you just don't know. But hey, the whole idea is even if this data sheet, which doesn't have any performance graphs or anything like that, you know, just your basic data, there's no reason why you should avoid these types of chips if you qualify them, uh, which is, you know, not a, an incredibly difficult process. If you're serious about saving your uh, bomb cost, you can qualify them over load, temperature, vari batch variability, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can qualify these parts for your own uh, in-house purposes and go, yep, we're going to use those. We're confident it's got X dropout and X performance under X load and all that sort of jazz. Anyway, uh, typical uh, line um, regulation there of 0.03% uh, per volt. It's in a SOT23 package. It's a one and a half cent jelly bean regulator. Power supply rejection ratio there, 50 dB. 
and it looks like it's got a uh, current limit as well if you short the output it'll limit it to 30 milliamps if we go up here there it is they've got a current limit there in the uh, circuitry there's not a lot of data on this thing but who cares uh, i out why has it got 500 milliamps down here oh that's absolute absolute maximum i limit down here is 400 yeah you know you get what you get with these uh data sheets but anyway let's try out the fine mad <laughs> voltage regulator for 1.5 cents all right let's power this thing up take a look i've got it uh, down on a little adapter down there little sot 23 jobby yes i will no i don't have any bypass caps because i thought we'd just uh <laughs> have a look first to see uh the stability of this thing without any bypass capacitors on it because this is a low dropout voltage regulator in an ldo one of the classic issues with ldos is uh stability they can actually oscillate if you uh, don't incorrect if you don't uh, correctly load them with the correct amount of capacitance the correct type of capacitor the esr all that uh, sort of stuff so they can potentially uh, oscillate because they use a, a pnp or a p channel uh, pass element which is inherently more unstable and anyway i won't go into the details but the advantage of it is is that you get the low dropout voltage for a 3.3 volt output voltage you can uh, only need to feed in say 3.4 volts or something like that you know if it's 100 milliamps dropout and of course that will change with current so let's actually uh i'm actually doing that at the moment actually had it loaded there we've actually got no load at the moment so no load with no capacitance absolutely no import or output capacitance we're powering it from uh, five volts here our output here i am actually sensing if you're wondering what this line is this is actually the voltage sense line which goes around to the back and uh, you can't see it but there's actually uh, external uh, voltage sense in here so we're going to avoid any uh, drops on the line actually going over when we load this thing down and as you can see 3.288 volts there no problems whatsoever and you can see over on the scope here, um, like there's no uh, oscillation at all. Well, nothing serious. We'll take a look at AC at the minute and in a minute. That's just uh, DC there. Let's just change our um, input voltage here and see what happens. I know we've got absolutely no light. 4.3, uh, 3.4, sorry, input uh, voltage. And it's still out. Put in, there we go. It should 3.3. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's dropping there. But anyway that's all hunky-dory so let's actually let, let's say four volts input let's actually turn on a hundred milliamp load so there we go got a hundred milliamp load you can see a hundred milliamps on here no problems and we're drawing the hundred milliamps uh, from the input because of course there's almost virtually no quiescent current in this thing it's the order of you know what was it 30 microamps or something tens of microamps um, so it's the input current is going to equal the output current and that's fine and dandy let's so let's actually input so let's increase our load current shall we let's go up and nothing on our scope it's looking good isn't it what was this it was 300 it was 250 wasn't it i think it said 400 oh yeah yeah we're starting to get some starting to get some funny business happening over here whoa 400 whoa anyway 1.3 watts um <laughs> output power and uh but it's still it's still regulated so that's ac coupling at uh five millivolts per division with that load there let's just switch the load off and on and of course we can capture that so it's going to uh but that's basically going up to like 1.3 watts that's that's pretty abusive um and the thing is regulating that it's handling that no problems at all all right, so let's see if we can capture a uh, transient there as we switch it off and on. So I'll set my trigger level just below that. So we'll single shot capture that. So let's switch that on. And yep, it really does not like that at all. So that's terrible, Muriel. Yep, look at that. There you go. So we can see that it's just dropped. <laughs> it's just dropped out completely there for a second. But... Uh, it's kind of to be expected because our load is horrible it's 390 milliamps okay let's try that again but a hundred milliamps this time bingo there we go we got so don't worry about the one before oh look at that isn't that 
a thing of beauty. When we switch it on, bloop, because <laughs> we've got no output capacitance at all. But that's, like, it's pretty impressive for a 100 milliamp load with no input or output capacitance. Fantastic. We can, let's whack on an output cap, see if we can get that to go away. All right, so I've got a 0.47 mic uh, film cap across the output and ground there. Still no input uh, capacitance. I've saved this as a reference uh, waveform, so that'll allow us to see the difference. Let's switch that off and on, 100 milliamp load again. Bingo, look at that. It's smaller, but it's still there. Look at that, but the response is basically still the same, but that extra output capacitance has helped. Let's go a bit larger. Well, I've gone a fair bit larger, uh, 330 microfarads on the extended leads, please forgive me. Ah, good enough for Australia. Let's go. And it's not even triggering now because it's just hunky-dory. Can we move the trigger point even closer to there? I suspect we may not even, yep, doesn't even get a blip. And that's what you expect, because now our capacitance is uh, more than enough uh, capable to take that uh, little uh, switch on uh, transient there. So yeah, anyway, it's still stable with uh, 330 mic electro, no problems. And even with a 300 milliamp load, can't get that, can't fold it, no problems. Anyway, just wanted to show you, this is uh, 10 millivolts per division. The, uh, there's no oscillation there, that's with its max... Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> that's coupling through our probe. It's our piezoelectric effect for you. Anyway, um, a full load, uh, 250 milliamps there, and we turn that off. Yeah, we can see at, at no load, we can see a little bit of funny business going on there. And if we turn that on... Tweak our load there, and you can see it down at no load. There's some like lower frequency oscillation stuff there by the looks of it. So anyway, that's that's not bad. That's with no output capacitance. That's crazy. And with half a mic output capacitance, to change it in one milliamp increments to three. Yeah, you can see it slowly start to change there but basically that's we can wind the wick up way on that and no nah, this is a pretty stable part i'm quite impressed okay something pretty horrible now no output capacitance with 330 microfarads right at the end of these long leads i'll whack that in the back there we go like there that is fine that's it like almost 250 milliamps there of course, we get our big uh, spike on our... And if, of course, we get our turn-on spike there, we'll see that. If we... Whoop, there we go. <laughs> no problems whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, this thing is uh, stable with no... or Well, you wouldn't use it with no capacitive load. And the data sheet, unless you can read Chinese, I guess, uh, doesn't uh, tell you a nominal um, output capacitance or output capacitance type or an ESR range or anything like that. But of course, you'd put your nominal one, say, uh, you know, typically one microfarad uh, ceramic across the output is uh, usually fine for an LDO like this. Okay, let's be mean and look at what happens if we short our output. So we're going to have a look at uh, what sort of current it's going to take up here. It's supposed to have a current limit. Yeah, there we go. It's dropping down. Wasn't it supposed to have like 30 milliamps or something? But anyway, it's dropping down to 120 milliamps. So <laughs> it's just oscillated to buggery over here. Wow, what's going on there? Wow. Check out that. I'm at 20 millivolts, 50 millivolts per division. That is, like, I got the short, like, directly across there like that of course you know there's some like there's some resistance in there so obviously something's happening that's 50 millivolts per division you know the extra connections and stuff like that so it's not a direct short on the pins and you can see so there you go about 70 hertz there it's um entered some sort of uh you know current regulation uh you know pulse mode and if we remove it of course we'll uh shoot back well let's try and get the recovery on that shall we so i'm going to pull the plug on that and what 
Oh, no, have we killed it? What's going on? Something's wah, 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 point one, dolt, <laughs> silly me. Yeah, I had the, uh, had the load on there. So it looks like it wouldn't recover from short to, uh, to the uh, 250 milliamp load. But as soon as I turned the load off, of course, it recovered back like that. So that's interesting. I wonder, I'll try that again, but like at a lower current, say 50 milliamps or something. And so 50 milliamp load this time. So we're going from short back to a 50 milliamp constant current load, of course. It's not a, uh, it's not a resistor, it's an active. Oh, look at that. Isn't that neat? Wow, look at that. So something sort of started to recover there. Well, of course, you know, there could be contact uh, bouncing there, of course. So something happened. And we're at five milliseconds per division, so yeah, that could easily be like contact uh, stuff. But yeah, it ramps back up, it recovers very nicely. I'm quite happy with that. No wackers, like there, and there's no oscillation. And that's once again with no output capacity. Well, sorry, no, I think I still got my 330 mic, <laughs> my 330 microfarads plugged into the other end. I mean, that's as horrible as it gets. Wow. Okay, we'll try that again, but with no output capacitance this time. So I've got none at the end of the line, none on the board here. So, oh, there we go. Oh, that's, that's what happens when you short it out, by the way. There you go. And 50 milliamp constant current load. So there's going to be like a response for the electronic load because it's an electronic software function which does it so it's not as good as like say having a resistor load and stuff like that so if you're testing like proper pulse response of a regulator or a power supply you know you need to do it with a proper resistive load but here we go ah there we go look at that we got a similar is that the same yeah because we're at uh, five, no, five milli seconds per division and there's a little bit of over shoot there this time a little bit not much Oh, yeah, oh, there's something, and then a little dip. But once again, as I said, there's no capacitance on there. But, yeah, it's got this little shelf in there, so obviously that's, I reckon, it'll do the same, it'll repeat that. I reckon that that'll be repeatable. So I reckon there's no, that's not contact bounce. Yep, there you go. So there's something in there that gives this uh, like little shelf in there from from recovery from short recovery back up but still that's pretty good this thing's <laughs> it's almost bulletproof one more time but I've got oh, there yeah, there we go that's with the uh, uh, half a mic capacitance on there so no worries and then we see that little dip but it recovers quite nicely from that short of course, you know, this is obviously not something you hugely want to uh, care about in, uh, well, you might in uh, normal operation, but of course, uh, with the building current limit, or what you're really concerned with is that you don't, don't blow the ass out of your regulator, you don't release the magic smoke when, you know, if the uh, load on it uh, shorts and you want it to recover. And this is pretty good. Okay, so let's look at the dropout voltage at uh, its maximum uh, rated current, 250 milliamps. It's not its absolute max, but that's its maximum uh, recommended. And of course, we're getting our, uh, it's, <laughs> pretty, it's pretty darn accurate this, even though it's like plus minus 2%. Of course, you'd have to test, you know, you know a dozen units or 50 or 100 units or something, you know, to get an idea of uh, nominal accuracy, especially across different uh, production uh, reels as well. You know, if they all come from the same uh, die wafer, then, you know, they're all going to be, uh, they should all be, you know, reasonably similar. Anyway, um, it's bang on. All right, so let's drop our voltage down. So this is our input voltage here. I'm going to drop that down. And we're looking at the AC output here. So 10 millivolts per, oh, yeah, there we go. Yep. So drop out. Oh, yeah, three point. Oh, yep, there we go. Let's call that at, uh, what, uh, 300 and, yeah, let's call it 300 millivolts. 300 millivolts uh, dropout. And by dropout, it means it drops out of regulation. And you can see that, like, it's still, like, it's still, the voltage is still there. But it's, you can see that it's becoming a bit unstable. Will that change if we remove our capacitance? No, look at that. Wow. No capacitance, no input output capacitance at all. That's crazy. Let's put 330 mic on that. Nah, it's doing the same business. 
the response is all the same. So this, the response of this thing uh, with a capacitive load, it's like, it, it really almost doesn't matter. But uh, once again, I wouldn't recommend using it without <laughs> output capacitors. That's just silly. Um, but yeah, it's it's really stable. So quite impressed. Um, so, yeah, so 300 millivolts uh, drop out at full rated current. Let's go down to 100 milliamps and let's keep going down, down. There we go. So at 100 milliamps, let's say the dropout. It's so only talking a 150 milliamp dropout there. If we go down to say 10 milliamps, you know, not much at all, then a dropout voltage should be quite low. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> 3 point3 like it's it's naff all like it's tens of millivolts uh, dropout so yeah this thing's pretty decent I like it and for those curious to know about ripple rejection I'm uh, feeding it from my function gen which is generating uh, 5 volts with 500 millivolts uh, peak to peak uh, sine wave on there at one kilohertz and my output there on the second channel the green one there you go rock solid and if we AC couple that, um, there's nothing there. So it is, it's just fine. Two kilohertz, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on, come on. And we've got no output capacitance too, by the way. 30 kilohertz now. Of course, that was only a load load there because I'm powering it from a, a function gen here. I couldn't be bothered like getting a higher power uh, solution for this. This is at 40 millihertz, millihertz, 40 milliamps and get your units right Dave and 40 milliamp uh, load and that's we're back to our one kilohertz um, and it's <laughs> it's just fine one and a half cents for this regulator and a lot of people would say I wouldn't trust this thing any further than I can read the data sheet and well you know like <laughs> fair enough but you know if you're in the business where sense matters um, on parts and you know you've got a lot of these on your board uh, and you're manufacturing a lot of boards and all that sort of stuff and this seems like a good little bulletproof regulator it's uh, its accuracy seems fine its load regulation seems fine its uh, dropout uh, performance is you know more than good enough its stability with uh, capacitive loads or lack thereof um, and you know distributed at the end of long lines it seems fine as well seems absolutely bulletproof from a stability uh, point of view its recovery from uh, shorts is fine everything's hunky-dory in this thing it it's almost like a bulletproof little you know jelly bean 1.5 cent sub <laughs> 23 voltage regulator so it's like it's well worthy of consideration of course like I haven't tested noise performance and there's a whole bunch of other parameters which you can test you could spend weeks qualifying a part like this you know I haven't tested it over temperature and all sorts of stuff so it might be worth uh, considering these like you know generic um, Asian brand parts for your next project if you're looking to save the cost because haven't been able to fault this thing yet so pretty impressed by that 1.5 cents it's worth every micro cent <laughs> this part so anyway if you like that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always you can discuss down below let us know if you've used um any of these you know non non mainstreaming quote marks i mean th these parts are probably bog standard in china used in every you know two dollar farty novelty gadget um that you can get and they're, they're probably just absolutely perfect little regulators um it's just that they're just not one of your you know western brand known suppliers like your you know your ti's or your nationals or whoever and this thing it, it seems to work a treat it's one like it's one fifth the cost of any at least one fifth the cost it's just crazy and that's from a catalog supplier imagine what if you did a deal if you needed hundreds of thousands or millions of these things and you bought them from uh, directly from the manufacturer assuming that you can do that um, of course I'm sure you could and like how much would these things cost when you like really will and deal the price let alone just from an off the shelf off like stock off the shelf catalog supplier like LCSC it's nuts <laughs> catch you next time Hello.